All right, so this is this is actually what we're this is our end product we're going to be looking for. Um, it's slightly different than the one you guys are going to design in that um, I extrude bossed my name in the back. You guys are going to be extrude cutting your name into the back. Uh, it works better that way on the powder printer. We're going to be making these on the powder printer. Um, but other than that, everything is is going to be the same. Okay, but that's that's pretty much our end product there. Um, everybody needs to draw this, but if you get to uh, this before everybody else, feel free to change it. You know, I'd like to see some customization on your guys' light switch plates. Um, I, I noticed, I mentioned yesterday that, um, you know, there's the softball. Um, there's a, a bunch of different uh, neat ideas. Um, I can show a couple of those to you right now. And well, got them in here somewhere. There we go. Okay, so there, there's a couple. <laughs> Swag. All right, so this one was a goose head. Um, this one was International Harvester. Swag. That was just sort of a interesting design. And then there's another one here. All right, we have some interesting design. The male bathroom <coughs> symbol. Another interesting design there. Uh, that one was kind of neat. She actually extrude bossed letters on the outside of the uh, switch plate. Um, but yeah, so. Um, those are some different switch plate ideas that you guys can, you know, think about. Um, minimize that, and I'm going to show you guys how to get started. So what you're going to do is you're going to trace the switch plate out on the paper. And uh, once you've traced the outline, trace the box on the inside. And then uh, mark where those holes are. Okay, so everybody take a look back up here. We need to figure out some dimensions. There's a few dimensions here that are really important. So let's go over those important dimensions. When we're all done today, this is what your switch plate will look like. However, it's going to have uh, numbers instead of question marks. Okay, and that picture is on EDU 20 in your uh, resources folder. If you just look at the news feed, it tells you how to get there. Okay, so um, once you copy down your, uh, or once you trace your light switch plate, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and put in all of these uh, dimension lines and extension lines. Don't put in the question marks, though. You can just leave a blank where they go. There's not like any secret as to uh, what dimensions you need for this. You just you need enough dimensions to make the part. There are some dimensions that are more critical to the design of your light switch plate than others.
these lines that I'm drawing up here. Yeah. Uh, they're in the. Uh, if you look at the news feed, it'll give you the instructions on how to get there. But it's in the resources, SolidWorks, and uh, switch plate folder. Okay, so I have all of my measurements laid out, uh, or all my extension lines and dimension lines laid out. Now I want to go over a couple of these with you. Like I said, some of these are more important than others. Dimensions that are not so important. Can anybody give me one you think is probably not all that important when you make your light switch? The width. The width isn't really important that you get it exactly right. The width. You know, all you need to do is make sure that the light switch plate covers the hole in the wall. And as long as it's wide enough to do that, it doesn't really matter. And the height, as long as the height of the switch plate is big enough to close or to cover the hole, the height doesn't really matter. So you can make it wider than this. You can make it taller than this. You might even be able to make it thinner and shorter than this. I don't know. It depends on how big the hole in your wall is uh, for your light switch. Um, but on this one here, um, what we're going to do is we'll just replicate this one first, and then uh, we'll worry about you know making it custom. So what I'm going to do to measure this is I'm just going to take my caliper and uh, I'm going to measure the width and the height. Spencer, can you grab me a caliper, please? Okay, so just real simple here. I'm just going to measure the width of my light switch plate. Make sure it's in there nice and straight and it's not crooked. So I'm looking at this and it's uh, 2 and 950 thou. 2 and 950 thou. So that's almost, it's almost 3 inches wide exactly. So I'm just going to put uh, 2.9 nine five oh all right and then for the height I would measure that one the same gotta measure that the same way now the uh, the holes on these get a little bit trickier okay when you're measuring the inside of something it changes things up a little bit so go ahead and take a look up here I'm going to show you guys how to measure this rectangle so to measure this rectangle we have to measure the inside so look, at, look up here, I don't want you guys to miss this. You don't measure the inside of a hole with the front. You measure it with the back. And what you're going to do is you're just going to open up the jaws inside that hole, and then there's your, your hole size. So this is um, 425 thou. Okay, so 425 thou for my width of the hole. Okay, and then you would measure the height of the hole the same way. Now with the screw holes, those are circular holes. So we're not going to measure that in width and length. We're going to measure it in diameter. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these inside here. And you don't want to measure the chamfer. If you look in there, you'll see there's a chamfer, which is like a 45 degree cut on the edge. Okay, we're not measuring that chamfer. We're measuring the hole just below the chamfer. We're not measuring the two flat pieces that hold the screw in place in the very back. In fact, we're not even going to draw that part. Um, you'll notice it's kind of a, a rectangle inside that hole. We're just going to draw a hole all the way through. So what we're going to want to measure is the hole and not the chamfer and not, not the uh, supports in the very bottom. Okay, so when I measure the diameter of this hole, I'm getting uh, 200 thou. So that's 0.2. All right, so the diameter of it's going to be 0.2. Okay, the other one should be exactly the same. I'm about 
15 thou under well yeah so I, I guess it's more like uh, it's more like 185 thou yeah so I'm going to change that from point 2 to point point one eight five for my whole size okay and um, so that's how you get that diameter uh, the rest of it measuring it is pretty simple except you have to do a little bit of math for this one that I'll label Z and X okay now X is the distance from the top of the hole to the bottom the top of the hole to the bottom of the rectangular hole and this one's difficult so if you're not amazing with math you should probably pay attention to this part so to get from the distance from the center of this hole to the bottom of this rectangle we need to know the measurement from the top of the hole to the bottom of the rectangle which is X what we want is Z what we what we have is X so if we take X and we add X to the diameter of that hole divide that by 2 which will give us the radius that'll give us Z okay Z is what we need X is what we got so if the diameter is 0.185 then it's 1.85 divided by 2 plus X whatever X is I'll let you guys measure that on your own and then that'll give you Z cool cool um, other than that the measurements are, are pretty pretty straightforward um, get all your measurements down on the on a piece of paper and then uh, make sure you keep this piece of paper you don't want to lose it because then we're going to draw it in SolidWorks so that's the next step the instructions for how to draw it in SolidWorks are in the resources folder so make sure you guys read the instructions all the way through they're pretty short all the way through before you get started you guys got any questions just let me know you got one what's up Uh, good question. X and Z is not the same. X is the distance from the bottom of the rectangle to the top of the circle. Z is uh, from the bottom of the rectangle to the center of the circle. Can anybody tell me why we dimension to the center of a circle versus the edge of a circle? And somebody that's taken my wood tech class should know this. That's where the drill is going to go. Yeah, when you drill a hole you don't line up the drill on the edge of the circle you line up the drill on the center good job Luke alright so go ahead and get this drawn once you guys get this all drawn read those instructions and uh, get going on your your drawing